Hello and welcome to What's Up Punk, we're taking a look at the myriad sub genres underneath the umbrella of punk. Today we'll be taking a look at Plague Punk. This one's been on the back burner for a while. Hmm, can't imagine why. What is Plague Punk? Plague Punk is a punk genre with the aesthetic that throws us around the Middle Ages of Europe during the time of the bubonic plague. However, we're not really restricted to just that time period for many reasons. One, the first recorded case is actually in China in 224 BC, but it's most remembered for unaliving two-thirds of the European population in the 17th century. So if you were to work with just the plague part, then you would have a wide variety of time periods and settings. However, this is largely ignored because we focus on these terrifying bastards. That showed up in the 1619 plague outbreak of Paris, in the written works of royal physician Charles de Lorme. Serving King Louis XIII of France. I give you the reason humans now have a built-in wariness of physicians. I mean, as a whole, down ethic lines, there's tons of other examples. The second reason we're not trapped in the Middle Ages is, well, fighting a plague isn't what you call visually interesting. See any version of the Andromeda strain as an example of this. So most times the plague is portrayed as... <laughs> Love them or hate them, the dead are a useful visual stand-in, just for the plague itself or how foreigners are seen by others trying to social distance from the plague. Man's own humanity to the sick or dying, you make the call. Aesthetic. So who are these aforementioned terrifying bastards? Plague Doctors, a name that is a misnomer. Oh, I don't mean because doctoring wasn't as advanced back then by no means. There's at least one confirmed plague doctor that wasn't trained under any physician. Beforehand, he was literally a fruit seller. Doc, can you do anything for me? Let's try rubbing this apple and really soak in those vitamins. God, I wish that was my usual gallows humor. It's not. Here's the rundown of what my favorite cures a PD would prescribe. Bloodletting with leeches to reline the humors. Eh, kind of funny. Rubbing a shaved chicken on the patient, the idea that the disease would transfer over to it. My question is, why is it naked? And finally, a golden shower. Not joking, Dr. R. Kelly believed it had healing properties. Okay, I'm joking a little bit. It was at least boiled beforehand, so generally pretty sterile. Not in any way effective in fighting the plague, but less of kink. Why do I bring this up? To spotlight that humanity has always been a cornucopia of morons. And despite the name, the plague punk in this genre need not be nor act like doctors. Oh yeah, hear me correctly, the plague doctors are the punks this time around. Surrounded by the dead with no idea what to do but looking wicked while they stumble through? Yeah, bunch of punks. Okay, so if they were completely useless in curbing the Black Plague, what did they do? Bring out your dead! There's one! No, I'm friends. I'm not dead! They recorded death tolls and number of infected people for demographic purposes occasionally performing autopsies and oversaw disposal of the dead. The design of the plague doctrine form was also attributed to Charlie. The beak shade masks were stuffed with strange concoctions of spices and herbs, believing that the plague was airborne and that the sweet smells protected them from it. It wasn't. It didn't. But burning the concoction like incense in the mask made it look really cool. Kaka, mother. Also, it was never intended to look like a bird, it just ended up that way. So the scent could keep the miasma out, but not choke the dock. Other than that, there really wasn't a stock uniform for the docks, but the most well-known variant was a tunic made of a thick wax canvas and a shroud without an opening in the front, dark colors, mainly black, were used to hide blood stains, vomit, and mud. Under the tunic, the play doctor wore a thin leather blouse with short sleeves, always tucked in pants, making it more hermetic. The gloves, also made of a wax leather, were essential to avoid contact with the sick. They had to be long to place them under the sleeves of the tunic. Charters always had a belt where they hooked necessary tools for the plague doctor, healing or aromatic products to apply to the sick, weapons. 
Now this crap actually worked, as the plague was fluid based, not airborne. It was a very stylish, rudimentary hazmat suit. I could have saved myself so much trouble if I just said level 1 bloodborne armor plus a mask. This wouldn't really change in a contemporary or a plague punk story in the future. The materials would advance and the mask would be more of a gas mask or rebooter, but overall style would remain the same in keeping with that striking macabre form. Plague Punk, as with many other contemporaries, fall into that going lock zone of being both needed but hated. Town and cities hired plague doctors because they treated everybody, the poor, the rich, and nobility. Plague doctors were in high demand during epidemics, and some were in fact kidnapped and held for ransom. Those are the big bosses though. The general rabble were less keen on, uh, plague doctors. What? No. With this face? They just want to snuggle him? Yeah, seeing these bleak looking boys meant death was not far away. Plus the, uh, other thing. Yes, be it the 17th century, the 21st century, or the 31st century, it's still a gig economy. Plague punks aren't some watering killer helping the downtrodden. They're getting hazard pay. Best way I can pillform the aesthetic of Plague Punk story is Bloodborne, a world pushed to the brink but still holding on, not falling right into despair or the dead. A world and economy and social change not only from the dead, but a virulent disease that can take you at any moment. The constant pressure of it, psychological stress of punks not only because of said pressure, but the mask is their face now. A need of survival because of the design, something that separates them from other people and themselves, it could also be used as an allegory of the plague doctor or the plague punk no longer being part of humanity because of what they've seen and what they've done and the mask itself just separating them more because they just look so macabre. Technology. Here's where inspiration and punk really deviate, like more than usual. The most advanced technology available to the Plague Doctor was a stick. Granted, a nice stick, but still a stick. Plague Punk rolls a little different. In the game Plague Punk Justice, they do in fact have a cure for zombies. And I mean 1200 feet a second of buckshot, some type of serum that can either temporarily or permanently Realize someone. Most other plague punks goes for more traditional cure for zombies or monsters. In the one shot by Grim Contrarian, do no harm, Zeke uses a grim scythe and his sidekick uses a crossbow. Everyone else is pretty uh traditional. I can't believe you got him! You expert rootin' tootin' eagle-eyed goth loving marksman! I love it. You managed to find a way to win. And everybody still loses! A lot of times Plague Punk gets wrapped up in steampunk basically because everything that isn't clearly advanced technology or contemporary gets rolled into steampunk. However, like I said earlier, as long as they have the look and are knee deep in dead people, this one can really be placed with any other punk. Huh. You know what? A Plague Punk Cyberpunk mashup would be cool. Chromed out Plague Doctor cleaning up the streets of a mega city of punks going through the black shakes or cyber psychosis. <laughs> Where did Plague Punk start? I'm not actually sure. I assumed it just naturally spilled out of Steampunk, Castle Punk, possibly Clock Punk. As I said, they cut a striking silhouette that the more gothic punk might latch onto, and it made its way around the internet, and boom, Plague Punk. That's possible? But like the clown once said, Sometimes I remember it one way, sometimes another. If I'm going to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. So let's call that Origin A. Origin B, Plague Punk Justice, a tactical turn-based strategy game about being a healer. Also, if you try researching Plague Punk, it's going to be mostly what you find information on. Maurice Ozalis, there is no way I got that right. Its creator turned the not healers into healers in a round generated map game it released in 2019. Which is where we run to a snag. Origin C 2015 Bloodborne drops and while it has a lot of elements of Plague Punk, monsters, lone punk dressed in leathers, there's only one guy that really wears a plague mask and that's Crow Eileen and she mostly hunts like hunters who have gone rogue so it doesn't really mesh but everything else fits so perfectly. And finally we have Origin D November 4th 2009 Karen Gusoff publishes an article on JeffVandermeer.com the next big punking positing that Plague Punk was going to be the next big punk genre. This article was buried so deep into Google, I almost missed it three or four times. So it likely didn't make its rounds back in the day, but maybe it did, uh, excuse the metaphor, but I can't exactly track this like a disease vector. Real life Plague Punks.
kidding. I'm kidding. Though admittedly, if this wasn't on my mind, I might have pushed this video back again. Right. In reality, during April and May 2020, police in Norwich, England were looking for a persistent curfew violator who has been seen in the northwestern suburbs of the city in full Plague Doctor outfit. It has been pointed out to the locals at the university, which has both a medical school and teaches a cross-discipline degree in history of medicine. So this dude knew exactly what he was doing. Also, some cosplayers had converted their Plague Punk costumes into full functioning masks, which is the definition of irony, since medical mask and Plague Doctor mask is literally the same thing after 700 years of medical science and improvement. Full disclosure, if I had been forced to come into work during 2020, I was going to buy myself a Plague Doctor mask. My recommendations. SCP-049, SCP Object Class, Euclid. SCP-049 is a humanoid entity roughly 1.9 meters in height, which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor. While SCP-049 appears to be wearing the thick robes and ceramic mask indicative of the profession, the garments instead seem to be grown out of SCP-049's body over time, and are now nearly indistinguishable when her form is beneath them. X-rays indicate that despite this, SCP-049 does have a humanoid skeleton structure beneath it. SCP-049 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though tends to refer English or medieval French. While SCP-049 is generally cordial and corrupted with Foundation staff, especially irritated or at times outright aggressive if it feels that it is in the presence of what it calls the Pestilence. Although the exact nature of the Pestilence is currently unknown to Foundation researchers. It does seem to be an issue of immense concern to SCP-049. SCP-049 will become hostile with the individual it sees as being infected by the pestilence, often having to be restrained should it encounter such. If left unchecked, SCP-049 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. SCP-049 is capable of causing all biological function of an organism to cease through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown. Uh, no more of that. Bloodborne. Apologies, I will be cursing a lot through this part because I hate From Software. Sorry, but I do, and it's not just a case of get good and I can't seem to, though any game that has a stamina bar immediately pisses me off a little. It's how they've chosen to tell their story. To not tell it. Critical need to know information to get even one fucking clue what's going on is flavor text on items. I'm the kind of guy that skips logs in a game if they're not audio because I thought there was a spoken unspoken law in visual medium called show not fucking tell. Also, who gives a fuck? All the endings are bullshit in these games. In BB1, option one, you kill an old man and wake up from a dream. Did, did that cure me? That's why I came to the city, to find a cure so I don't turn into a monster. Hello? Writer? Director? Anybody? What? Option 2. An old man, he gets to wake up from a dream. I'm assuming in a city still overrun by monsters. Good luck with that brother. Die and you become a slave to an outer god, continuing the cycle for the next hunter. Or become a cosmic lamprey. Yeah, I know you're an outer god. whoop de fucking do Don't be confused by years of pop culture osmosis. Outer gods are just really big organisms. The big pull is they have a better understanding of reality. Which is great, except, my guy, here's the thing, the fuck you going to do with it? Hunt the other outer gods? Noble, but I'm pretty sure the tire fire of those reality you just left behind you is still roasting. And you clearly need to grow into the role because you are a fetus again. Uh, that was cathartic. It's also a really good game, and I love weapons that transform. I imagine this game is what reading an HP Lovecraft novel was back in the day before Outer Gods as a concept were so mainstream that there is both a book and a dating sim about dating one. Where Spider is giving how Lovecraft was, he'd probably be into that. Not from software. Games give the feeling of needless sparseness because they're all just dungeon crawlers that found the niche market of masochistic gamers. But this feels just claustrophobic enough and again it's pretty in that gothic way if not in the dream or part of the city has gone crazy 
This feels like a city going through or had gone through a plague. Yeah, that's the second reason these games piss me off. No, I'm not done yet. Time scaling is so weird. It always feels like the events going on around you have both happened and are still happening. I let it go in this one because the cavalcade of rodeo clowns that call themselves scholars in this world injected dead fish god blood in their veins. Of course that equals monsters, not godhood. What the hell, man? It sure as hell pissed them off though, equaling time compression. However, the weapons are cool, interesting, and this leads us to the only reason this company is still alive. The tsunami of endorphins do get from taking down monsters because the fights are so satisfying, even the minor ones. You know, unless you're one friend who mains this game, does all the work while you just sit there cooling your thumbs. Don't tell me that hasn't happened to you. That's happened to you. How do I feel about Plague Punk? It has potential. Maybe it's just a toy the last few years, but seeing some grim bastard punch a disease so hard in the face it explodes is stupid cathartic. I would love to see a high school of the dead with Neo Plague Punk gear, a horror movie about a team of Plague Punks getting picked off in a city of the dead by some unseen miasma only to find out it's one of their own turned killer instead of healer. Uh, three Plague Doctors either left or disappeared in Venice after an outbreak, so there is precedent. Safe to say, most certainly my jam. Sign out question. Is anyone else like stupefied that plague basks haven't gone vogue in the hellscape that's been the 2020s? My skies were goddamn orange for two months on top of the pandemic that was already going on. I get it, surgical masks are easier, cheaper to produce and customize, but this was is a golden opportunity for some fashion forward goths to bring on a gothy renaissance. I'm disappointed, but as a historically cheap bastard, I get it. Your thoughts in the comments. Well, this has been What's Up Punks. Till next time, the dead are piled higher than you can see. Some of them are still walking, even talking. Well, that's rough. Put a smirk on your face, say something gallows, dripping with sarcasm while you get back out there. Because this shit ain't ending time soon, and you're still a no good, dirty punk. You know it, you love it, here's the spiel, let's do it. Hit subscribe to be my subscriber. Hit the bell so you know when I've actually posted stuff. Still no idea why those two things are separate now, but whatever. And of course, hit like to appease the algorithm gods. All oh, oh, fear and praise. On a list of whatever YouTubes, I am also probably not going to get any ad revenue for these videos, so if you would be so kind, check out that Patreon and the GoFundMe. Links in the description. <laughs>